Selamat siang semuanya, Bapak Ibu sekalian. Selamat siang yang terhormat Ibu Menteri Profesor Nila Muluk. Uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, it's it's an <coughs> it's an honor to be here. And um, when we talk about food sustainability, when we talk about the impact of productivity and 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 the consumptions and the impact of that overconsumptions. What if I tell you today that there is a food that has taste as good as meat, but is produced with 10 times less greenhouse gases? There is already one. What if I tell you that this food is produced from an ingredient that has zero cholesterols, high fiber, high proteins, and almost zero saturated fat, and there's already one. What if I tell you that this food is so versatile that you can make any kind of food, it, it tastes very, very good, and there's already one. And the name of the food is corns. So this is our story, and I'll tell you uh, our story. Our company is born in, in the 1960s. It is exactly similar, it's actually eerily similar to the issue that we are facing today. At, at that time, people were believed that it is impossible to feed the entire populations because the, because the rate of the supply just cannot cope with the, uh, with the global population's uh, growth. So one man has an idea that what if you know, somebody can convert a carbohydrate into a protein using a microorganisms. So he sent a, a team of scientists. He, he looked at 3,000 microorganisms. And the breakthrough comes exactly 50 years ago from today. He found a species that is called Fusarium venenatums. This is a fungus. And today we call it mycoproteins. But if you think that they commercialize it right away after that, the answer is not. It takes 20 years after that. So you will see this, the challenge that, that we face as a, as a technology company that trying to produce new food. It takes 20 years for safety testing, safety evaluations, growing up in scale, all of those works. But finally, after 20 years, we launched our first corn product in, in UK. And now becoming the most carefully tested product in European market. So the single ideas now it turns into a journey. So for the several next 10 years, starting from 1985, we launched in all European markets pretty much. In 2002, we launched into the United States of, of America. 2010, Australia. And now, since corn become part of modern essence in 2015, we bring to Asia, we bring to Philippines, we bring to Thailand, we bring to Singapore, and hopefully Indonesia is coming very soon. So we believe that Asia right now is at the critical junctions. We, we feel that with the economy that is rising, with the population and growth, unfortunately, with the dietary trend, there is a sign that if Asia does not pay attention, it can follow the unsustainable path that is previously taken by the developed countries. So I think Asia should, take, should learn from the history on that. So after 50 years now, we are able to produce to bring, to offer to, to humankind a protein that is based on fungus. Not only animals that you already know, not only plant-based proteins, soy or, or pea proteins, but now we have the third category that is based on fungus. And the success that we have is based on three factors. It's our focus on human health, planet health, and the taste. We have 20 years nutrition research on mycoproteins. This mycoprotein has zero cholesterols, has, again, has almost zero saturated fat, has high fibers, high dietary fibers, and all the studies that, that we have done 
in collaboration with uh, different academic institutes, essentially address all the issues that we have today concerning significant public health concerns. People who eat mycoprotein, they feel full longer. So this helps when we talk about obesity. People, when, when people eat about mycoprotein, they have an improved insulin sensitivity. And because, again, mycoprotein has zero cholesterol, has almost zero saturated fat, there's, this, there's, there's an indication when people eat this, their blood cholesterol is reduced. And recently, we also do a study to compare, because even after 20 years, people are still, still asking us, is this as good as animal proteins? So recently, we do a study, and we do bio-equivalent uh, comparison, and it is equivalent. And again, we can, we can, we can, I can share you uh, a later one as well, after this presentation. I mentioned about this, the production, the process to produce mycoprotein is through a vertical fermentation, so it, it literally does not require a land. Again, it's less than half of this room. You can create a fermentation reactor, and this one has a capacity of 25 to 50 tons a day of protein. So, so scale is, is not an issue for us. It has, again, 10 times less water footprint, 10 times less greenhouse gas, 10 times less feed efficiency, you know, all of those. More, more efficient in feed efficiency. All of those, we believe we have one of the solutions to the problem that we are facing today when it comes to food sustainability. The mycoprotein itself, the, the taste is so bland, and that's very, very good for a culinary expert, for an industry expert who try to develop different kinds of foods. The mycoproteins give that ability. So when we, now when we're talking today about, oh, how do we change, how do we shift diet uh, into a more balance? How do, we, how do we eat less meat? How do we do that? My answer is, right now you don't have to compromise. You just need to basically see this product and taste it yourself. And you're actually going to see it at lunch as well. And if, you, and if you don't believe that we can uh, make Indonesian this from corn, we will have it, corn satay later one. And if it's not good, please tell me so we can collaborate. <laughs> oh, I, I would like to remind uh, all of you that, that innovations cannot be separated from risk. So, so there's been a lot of effort to produce proteins from, from microorganisms, and, and corn right now is the only success story. So, so there's a lot of risk, but we are still committing to our science and our technology. I think corn is the living proof. It's, so far, it's the only living proof that if you harness planet, again, mycoprotein itself comes from soil, right? So if we harness planet resource, we can have an answer. So the answers might lie over there, and the answers, we need science and technology. To, to discover more product like this and to advance our technology. So currently, we are right now looking at uh, using our corn technology, and instead of using a, a pure glucose, we will use a waste, carbohydrate waste, to feed the microorganism so we can improve the sustainability profile of, the, of our production process. For a company like us, a technology company, and a food companies. We understand that only through collaboration we can succeed. And, and, and when it comes to governments, a, a company like us can only thrive in, in a regulatory environment that is, that is, that is transparent, that is science-based, and also promote, uh, you know, promoting entrepreneurship when it comes to investments and when it, when it comes to IP protections. And to, to the NGO, to the civil society, we really want to you know, continue to collaborate with you to educate our consumers on nutrition of alternative protein based on good science because sometimes there's still a lot of fear today. There's still a lot of questions. Is this as good as this? So let's use science. Let's partner with us. Let's work together with us to educate our consumers. To academic institutes, let's continue to create evidence of health benefits and sustainability of alternative proteins. So we are currently looking for partners in Asia to, to, to really create more and more evidence so that there is no more doubt 
that this is as good as animal proteins and it is more sustainable. And to industry and culinary experts, let's work together with us. Let's develop food that solves global problems, that is health and sustainability, but let's, let's, let's do it in such a way that we embrace the local context, that when it comes to taste, social and economy. So uh, this is our story. So I would like to invite all of you to uh, make history with us. Thank you for your attention.